everybody, thanks for joining me. Coach Al here. In this video, I want to talk about tightness and restriction and even pain in the low back and one of the most common causes of it. And ironically, one of the things that we do to help stabilize and strengthen our core can contribute to this tightness or soreness. And that's a side plank. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a muscle here in our low back, deep, that attaches the spine to the pelvis called the quadratus lumborum, QL. What can happen sometimes is depending on our lifestyle and the kinds of training we're doing, that muscle can either get overworked, go into spasm, or just generally get tight. So it can be helpful sometimes to stretch it out, lengthen it, and help it relax. And as I mentioned, if you're doing a lot of side planking and running too for that matter, uh, that muscle can certainly uh, take a beating. Now the goal of our training is to create integrated stiffness and strength through the entire trunk. In a perfect world, the QL would only do its job and nothing more. But sometimes it still can get a little tight. And if you're feeling some tightness or stiffness there, um, and even a little pain that's deep, that feels like you almost can't get to it, the QL could be the reason. So in today's video, I wanna talk you through and demonstrate three or four of my favorite go-to stretches for the QL. I'm gonna start with really what is my favorite, which is a standing side bend. So to do this, you're just gonna bring your arms up Pull your elbows tight to your head and sort of imagine you're in a streamlined position uh, pushing off the wall in the pool. Now with all of these stretches, the idea is to lengthen the spine, stand nice and tall in your mind's eye. You should just see spaces opening between all the vertebra in your spine. And what we're gonna do is, once we create that length going to start to bend to the side, right? So you may be familiar with this as a yoga pose. Now the idea here is I'm reaching up. I'm going to reach up with my arms and over to the side with the idea of creating a lot of length through here. So we'll get the QL stretched out. This is also a nice stretch for the lat as well. So I can push my hips off to the side and start to reach up and over. I also like stick mobility for this same kind of stretch. You may not have this stick, but if you've got something similar that's bendable, that won't break, uh, this can be a nice movement to do. So I'm gonna bring the stick and place it close to my feet here, grab the top of the stick, and then I'm gonna use my strength to essentially create an effective stretch. So I'm pushing out while reaching up and over so I can really feel that stretch through the entire uh, low back. It feels great. Now for all of these stretches, you may want to hold them for 30 seconds or even up to two minutes, depending on how you're feeling. Ease into them. Don't force anything. It's my stick. Um, and just work through it gradually, all right? So the second one that I really like to do, and, and to me this has got multiple benefits, uh, is a seated forward bend. So if we look at that whole area of the low back, not just the QL, but the entire low back region, it's heavily, heavily uh, innervated with lots of nerves and, and many layers of, of fascia. So it's easy for that area to get bound up and restricted. And the older we get, the more common that can be. So this is a position I like to sit in, sort of, a, I guess you think of it as an Indian sit. So this way we can kind of ground the core, so to speak, in the hips and create good leverage to then allow for just a little forward bend. Now this is an area where I have a lot of restriction. So I tend to like to grab my legs, kind of plant my elbows on my knees, and then just breathing normally, I'm just gonna relax and pull my trunk toward my 
toward my legs, turn sideways. You can see this is, a, this is an area I personally have a lot of restriction. It feels really, really good just to sit in this position and just relax into it. And again, use some leverage just to kind of uh, pull myself down and in. Now, I, again, I'm thinking the same thing as with the side bend. I want to really lengthen my spine and just constantly think about my, my trunk, my head going that way so I can get a nice stretch through that whole uh, low back area, okay? So that's, that's, a, that's a great one. Now, in this same position, um, another way to get specifically into the QL is to do what I think of as a sort of uh, a rotating full moon pose, or I actually even think of uh, holding a Swiss ball uh, in my arms. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up, we'll focus on this right side for a moment, I'm going to reach up and over with my right arm and then with my left arm I'm sort of imagining going in the opposite direction. So again, I'm thinking about almost holding a ball here. So I'm going to reach up and then go this way with my arms and lean to the side. What's nice about doing this in this seated position is you create good grounding of your core and your hips. You get nice opening of the hips and then you can create some length there. So moving around in that position and just stretching through that whole area uh, feels nice. Now you can do this, that particular stretch in almost any position. You can do it in 90-90. You can even do it, I like to do this in sort of a half kneeling position. That works really well also. So in this uh, position, I'm gonna sort of reach up with my left, so I've got my left leg forward. I can reach up this way and I can reach this way. So I'm just getting a nice stretch. So I can open up this hip. I can, I can come the other way as well. It really depends on uh, what feels best for you. So give that a try. Play around with these positions and stretches. See which ones work best for you. Uh, which ones seem to get to an area of restriction or tightness. All right? And the last one that I like, and this is sort of a go-to for me for many different reasons. It's, it's more a movement uh, than a stretch, and that's Bretzel 2.0. So, as you know, the way we're going to set this up is I'm going to come into 90-90. Um, and again, just to clarify what that is, I've got about a 90 degree bend in my knees, about a 90 degree angle at my hips. I want to bring my uh, toes up toward my shin. And then in Bretzel 2.0, I'm going to post my arms here. So let me spin here a little bit. So as you know, The way to approach this movement, there's really two halves to it, if you will, two, two segments. The first is setting up, and this can feel uh, in and of itself like a really nice stretch for the trunk, for the low back, mid back, and hips as well. So what am I thinking about here? I'm going to create sort of an imaginary line between straight line with my hands that parallels my thigh. I'm just going to try to lengthen my spine here, again, as much as possible. And as I do that, try to open up my hips a little bit. And then, uh, depending on how you feel in this position, you may want to inch back a little bit with your hands to open up a little bit more, or go into the next phase of the movement, which is to lock that left elbow out and then ease down into a position where you're hinging at the hips. So let me turn to a slightly different angle. See what that looks like. All right. So scoot this way a little bit more. So again, set my hands up, open those hips. All right, I'm gonna lock that left elbow out. So as I hinge at the hip, I can create some nice length through the hips right into that thoracolumbar region through the low back. 
The goal, as you know, with this exercise, with this movement, is to keep this left posted arm elbow locked out. If you find you can no longer lock it out, then you're probably about as far as you can go. So you just keep working on it. And of course, uh, both sides. So give those a try. Standing side bend, seated forward fold, sort of that seated full moon Swiss ball movement where you're arcing this way and, and Bretzel 2.0. One last thought to keep in mind. So much of the training that we do is designed to bring an element of stiffness and stability into our body, into the tissues in an integrated fashion. But as is always the case, sometimes if, we, if we're doing a, a significant amount of side planking, we're trying to build that side plank or improve it, um, we can get some extra or less than optimal stiffness in the tissue. So we're seeking balance at all times. You know, training is about imposing a stress and recovery is about literally recuperating or undoing some level of that stress to come back to a, um, a better state of homeostasis, if you will. So uh, balancing the two, which is to say the side planking and or running or whatever else may be happening in our lives with some element of stretching and recovery can be really helpful. And of course, our lifestyle is an impact as well, too. I think for spending more time in a chair, certainly going from a continuous plank series uh, to a bike ride is an example, uh, where you're seated in, on the bike and not moving very much can have you getting off the bike, feeling a lot of stiffness in that low back, and the QL could be the culprit. All right? All right, keep on keeping on. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one.